Hey guys, this is Game of Cow playing Super Mario 3D Land. I figured since we're on the Mario Maker train, uh, I would continue with the Mario stuff. I will do the Pokemon LP again eventually, but there's a lot of stuff going on at the moment with me that I really just don't want to record it. As sad as that sounds, I guess doing the second RPG after GOS is probably not the greatest of ideas, but oh well. Since the last time we did stuff with this game, I actually have gotten some Street Pass stuff because of course I took my 3DS with me down to Durham, and uh, yeah, I managed to get some Street Pass stuff off the train, which is pretty cool. So I get to show this off after all, which is really neat. And basically, Street Pass stuff gives you extra mystery box houses, which will give you additional. Uh, well, can give you additional lives, or give you additional star coins that you would not normally have. I suppose they're star medals in this game, but whatever. They give you star medal coin crap. And, <laughs> yeah, you can see on the bottom screen the green question marks there. Those are all rejuvenated mystery box houses. So that's kind of cool. Anyway, uh, last time we finished off World 6, so this time we're going to start off World 7. I'm not really going to do too much of the Mystery House stuff, I'm just going to continue with the game here. And uh, there is the end. You can totally see it, and you could probably maybe reach... Can you all jump off of these? Yes, you can. You could probably reach the end here with uh, a wall jump. So, good job, game. Uh, that's, that's easily the... Uh, most substantial level in all of Super Mario history. So, uh, yeah, that was 7-1, let's move on. <laughs> no, no. Of course I'm going to go back and get the star medals and stuff. But I figured I would at least show that off because I saw it and I was like, you can totally do that. And that's your speedrun tactic should you want to play this game. So, for speedrunning. So, yeah. Uh, one thing I will say with this game is... As random as the level stuff is, they are at least competently put together. You know, they're still fun to play through, even if they are hella random. Like, does this? I think this is the the first game that, even though it tries to look like it has an overworld theme, it really has no theme within the stages themselves. And I've mentioned that a fair few times, I think, during this playthrough. It's been a while since I played this game. Uh, my capture card, or well. Yeah, my capture card itself is a, is being a little bit temperamental nowadays. When I uh, when I do try and use it, uh, sometimes the USB port is just not recognised at this point, which is uh, kind of lame. But it's it's not stopping me from using it. It's just I have to be very careful of uh, moving the actual system that much. And I don't need a second fire flower. One fire flower is fine because I can just go back and get it now because I'm a derp. I didn't really see the thing there. That's, I guess that is the, the biggest problem with this game is uh, even with the 3D on, I find depth perception is very tricky in this game. Like it just doesn't feel quite as uh, fluid as most of the other games do. Uh, anyway, there should, I believe, be a star medal in this room, but we'll just uh, check out the stuff there. Maybe there's not. I guess it's not. This is just a hidden little bonus area going, hey, you can totally do some stuff here if you want. Which is fine. That's uh, Those kind of things are good as well. This is the sort of thing you would expect to be in the, uh, the overworld, however. You know, not underwater, but whatever, you know. That's what the game has decided. And uh, that is what we shall do. Uh, you know, deal with. So... I guess underwater stages have never really been the most entertaining for a lot of people. Uh, I usually don't mind them. I, I think I've said this a fair bit before, but I really don't mind underwater stages. The only issue I end up having with them is... Uh, well, I mean, in this game, it's just a lack of... Uh, you know, free... not freedom, but the lack of... Uh, succinct movement, I guess. It, uh, this game is a bit weird in terms of the uh, 
in terms of where you move underwater. Like, it generally handles pretty well, considering you don't exactly... There's no need for me to kill this guy, I just feel like killing him. I think there might be, like, an extra life here. No, not even. Whatever. Um, yeah, considering you're not really using a 3D stick, per se, it, it actually handles pretty well, but... You know, it sort of combines the perspective issues that I've had before with uh, other stuff as well. It, it just doesn't feel quite as well polished as uh, many of the other 2D Mario level stuff. I seem to have completely ignored one of the, uh, the main pathways here, and I'm just kind of going around the level. As you can see, I uh, wasn't really supposed to come down this way because I can't really go any further there, so that's uh, it's kind of great. I really don't mind the fact that these levels take longer to do though. Like That's one complaint I know a lot of people have with uh, water stages is that they take forever. I really don't mind that. Like I like the... I like the pace of these sorts of things because it's, uh, it's very different from what you normally end up having in sort of normal hectic stages. Especially in this game later on when it starts getting to not speedrunner sort of stuff, but there's a lot of um, a lot of that type of activity that can go on. And it's it gets I guess a bit draining at times. That might be the best way of putting it. Because if you're constantly having to do type platforming and whatnot. Where am I going at this point? Because I already did go there. I, was, I guess I was supposed to just go straight up. Well, that was that was bizarre. And then that goes to the end, which we have already encountered. I don't actually need the gold flag, so we will just ignore it. And yeah. What a weird second half to that, I guess. That, that's... It's not poor design. It's just baffling design to me. Like, I guess it's because I've been starting to make levels myself now that even though this is, uh, if you like, 3D rather than the just a flat 2D plane that I'm obviously able to use myself in Mario Maker, it's still... you kind of get a bit of a sense as to what goes into making these sorts of stuff. And uh, it the confusing level design is sometimes really hard to avoid, but it's not something you really want to be doing if you can avoid it. Like, you want to make your levels unambiguous. I see a lot of people doing blind jumps and stuff, in, or having to do blind jumps in their levels, which is really kind of bad, you know. Try and give some sort of indication to your player as to where you actually want them to go. That uh, that usually helps out. Uh, but even then, like maze light levels are perfectly fine, but they need to be unambiguous. I guess is the uh, the way of putting it. Because if you make it so that your players just end up exploring but not really getting anywhere, then it disenfranchises them a fair bit, and you you really don't want that. Your players are supposed to be having fun, you need to you need to make sure that your level actually conforms to that. Which I suppose is then, you know, dependent on who you are, but as to what you find fun, but that is another topic for somebody else to do instead of me. Let's just make sure we actually get the, the flagpole here. And that was not getting the flagpole, you silly dodo brain. Okay, I guess I've got to go back through this stage after all. Welp, that's okay. Like, it's... The thing... I guess that's the other thing with this game that... Like, I didn't talk about any of the level there whatsoever, but that's because the level is just kind of there. It's it's not bad, it's definitely very, you know, inoffensive, like pretty much all Mario games are, but it just kind of exists. There's, it doesn't really have any identity to me, which is baffling, to say the least. I don't know. I mean, if, if you gave me this as my first Mario game, even comparing it to stuff like Mario World, that sure, it's not as iconic for definite, but 
I wouldn't find much like wrong with the way that these levels are. Yeah, you know, just because they don't stand out to me now, it's because I'm jaded, I guess. Like I, I would probably say exactly the same thing about a lot of Super Mario World levels or any Mario game levels at this point. But uh, that's just because I've played so many of them that uh, it's very difficult to have your own character at this point, you know? But, you can see this level takes absolutely no time whatsoever when you are, you know, knowledgeable about where you're going. Uh, did I seriously just do that? I I know what I was trying to do, because I've been playing Mario... Because <laughs> I've been playing like new Super Mario Bros. style stuff all the time at the moment. I pressed the R button instantly to do the, uh, to do the spin. Not realizing, of course, that this is not uh, not the right game for that, so I just kind of ground pounded instead of spinning, which is pretty magical. <laughs> but you know, it it's just one of those weird things, I guess. When you've played so much Mario, then it all kind of blends together. I think for those who like the 3DS as their first console and stuff, they would probably have a great time in this game and there'd be absolutely no sort of trouble for them. But as somebody who has played all of them from uh, Super Mario All Stars onwards, and even some of the NES ones I've gone back, like I've played the original Mario Bros. Mario 2, I've played Mario 3, I did not play. Uh, the US, you know, non-Japan, I guess, uh, Super Mario Bros. 2, but I played the other main platformer ones on there. Also, sometimes you can apparently get street passes on Mushroom Houses, I actually didn't know that, but yeah, you can get street passes that open up Mushroom Houses again, which is kind of cool. With 70 star medals, you can open up this extra stage hero, which we shall do just now because I do need to do a third stage in order to round this thing out. And it is full of blocks and uh, trampoline bungee cords. That's what they're called. So yeah, let's let's go and uh, explore a stage of climbing. Which, I don't know, I, I actually think these stages are done pretty well for this game. I do want that box, however. Uh, I need to find a good way of getting those. Uh, when you're on these platforms, you can't actually jump uh, up and down. You're restricted to a 2D plane, so... I guess that's, that's actually really helpful, because uh, otherwise this would be rather disgusting to deal with. Uh, ground hounds still give you extra jump height off of the blocks, which is great, and uh, you do not want to get smacked by a fire brana if you can help it. But of course, I could not help it there, because I'm silly. I guess that's another thing of this game is kind of weird, obviously it takes from the... Mario Galaxy series and whatnot, where you can jump on uh, piranha plants and stuff like that, which is very different from the 2D Mario games that it is kind of designed around. And uh, yeah, it, it can get a bit confusing for that, but then you also don't have the same style of piranha plant that you did in the uh, the original source material too. You only have the, the fire spitting style, even though they still act the same. It's, uh, they don't have quite the same aesthetic to them, which is fine. So that's the second star medal right there, and I guess we skipped the, uh, trial of stuff down there. Uh, it's very, very little that's actually skipped. So, before we proceed, let us see what is going to, uh, go with us there. You guys are up there being nice, giving us mushrooms, it's pretty cool. Uh, we don't have any need for those, but excess items do get converted into coins. And you can see that is where our star medal was. That's what I was going to point out a while back, so that is how we shall deal with stuff here. The whole not moving in 3D space in this area is actually really, really helpful. Uh, also, apparently, Mario can fall down. I honestly didn't know that because I've never stopped on these uh, these things before. But then I kind of heard him, you know, stuttering all over the place there, and I was like, you might want to move. But I 
bigger than experiment was in order. So if you stay still for too long, you will fall off like that. Uh, so it's not even like timed per se because you don't have to, you know, move very much at all in order to make sure that uh, that doesn't happen. Also, I'm just doing this because I can. There's absolutely no reason to go back there. It's kind of hoping like a, an invisible one-up or something would, in you know, teleport itself up. I guess I don't know. I don't know what I was going for there, but yeah, pointless exploration is sometimes fun as well. So to get the flag here, you want to knock these things up as high as you can, and. Uh, yeah, I mean, that, that ought to be high enough if I can keep it there, so we'll go with that, and no, because of that, I need a long jump off of that. Oh, I do hate the long jump in this game, it, it removes all of your control once you've done, like, you are absolutely committed to the jump when you do the long jump, and it doesn't really give you much advantage for doing it. Like. It's a tiny bit faster, but you don't really get any more distance off it because it doesn't jump you into the air. So, yeah, I'm not a fan of long jump in this game, and uh, I, despite using it pretty much all the time, I only really use it because it's marginally faster than the other stuff. Uh, we may as well just keep going with stuff. That is what we missed there. Oh, grand total of absolutely nothing, but whatever. So yeah, I guess uh, all of the, the limitations of this game is shown. I I don't know if I'm actually going to do the, the extra world stuff with this. I think I might just stop after the main game with this game because uh, it's like basically twice as long again to do the extra stuff and there's other games that I would like to play before uh, before too long, so I would rather not waste too much time doing all the extra stuff in this game. As interesting as it as some of it is, it's really not. Uh, it's basically the same game again, but with uh, challenges and stuff to it, like time limits or Shadow Mario's or whatnot. There are very few original courses in the extra world stuff and you get nothing for it so I don't know I'll consider it. it might be one of those things that I would go back to in streaming when I am eventually able to do that but yeah that's that's pretty much it so this has been Game of Cow playing Super Mario 3D Land showing off the extra me content uh, you know Street Pass content as well as starting World 7 Next time, we shall go ahead to this awesome looking clock place and we will continue with World 7. Till then, take care.